the marriage of human rights and democracy is among the most extraordinary developments of our time. Its roots go back into the 18th century. They include figures like Mary Wollstonecraft. Mary Wollstonecraft was born in Spitalfields in London in the spring of 1759. She should be remembered for her attack on the rights of man. It sounds strange to put it that way, but in fact, Mary Wollstonecraft, in her novels, in her essays, pamphlets, books, was convinced that the rights of man, at least as they were referred to at the time, were full of hypocrisy, of double standards, because of their exclusion of women. In A Vindication of the Rights of Woman, published in 1792, after a visit to Paris, Mary Wollstonecraft asked a simple but subversive question. If God gave his creatures, man and woman, rights of reason, how is it that half his creatures were excluded from these rights and from this reason? So Mary Wollstonecraft pleaded for the rights of women. Astonishing was the way Mary Wollstonecraft extended the talk of rights to children. She had two of her own. She had experience in the field of education. She set up a school in Newington Green. And she also, as a child, experienced the violence of a drunken father. Mary Wollstonecraft's view was dead opposed to the adages of her time. Children should be seen and not heard. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Wollstonecraft disagreed with this view of children. In her view, both boy children and girl children had the capacity to develop their reason. They were sentient beings. For this reason, she developed a whole scheme for the education of future citizens. It's true it was a cold shower view, a middle-class view of what education comprised. Frugality, hard work, discipline, self-discipline. But it's also true that Wollstonecraft's view was that future citizenship depended upon the emancipation of children, the extension of rights to young citizens. Wollstonecraft also had interesting things to say about reason. In her view, talk of rights of man was disembodied, didn't take account of passions, feelings. And so, in her essays, novels, political writings, Wollstonecraft emphasized that the whole division between the mind and the body was completely abstract, useless, misleading. And so she pleaded for the view that friendship was important in human affairs. In one of her novels, Unfinished, Maria, or The Wrongs of Woman, she tells the story of a woman who was institutionalized in an insane asylum by her husband. And Maria develops a lifelong friendship with Jemima, a working class keeper of the insane asylum. Wollstonecraft also insisted that the whole association of women with beauty was wrong, that it was actually a recipe for women's servitude. The whole idea that women are ornaments, that they're uh, uh, spaniels, as she says, toys, inevitably traps them into the view that they are unreasonable creatures not capable of exercising rights. So she rejected this view of beauty. The other thing that's interesting about Wollstonecraft is her fascination with nature. In her travels to Norway and Sweden and Denmark, in her letters, she has beautiful passages about our human dependence upon nature. She was interested in the sublime. So for these reasons, Wollstonecraft uh, refashioned, redefined what citizenship means, what rights of man means. It should include women, it should include the body passions and feelings. Mary Wollstonecraft was buried here in the churchyard of the old St Pancras church in inner North London. She left a legacy. You could say that Mary Wollstonecraft contributed vitally to the long democratic revolution because she pointed to the double standard, the hypocrisy, the exclusion of women of her time. It shouldn't need to be said, but it's worth saying again that in the 21st century, what Mary Wollstonecraft 
wished for, dreamed of, has still not come true. A world where women are the equals of men, but also have the right to be different than men.